If you want to get A-plus certified, you're going to have to take two exams. The 220-1001 or the Core 1 and the 220-1002 or the Core 2. So in this episode, I want to talk about what's on the Core 1 220-1001 exam, okay? Now, it all starts with CompTIA's objectives. So you need to head over to the CompTIA website. Here's the URL. Now, go over to CompTIA and locate the objectives for the Core 1 220-1001 exam. This basically is telling you what you're going to be tested over, and it's the tool I even use to build my training material. So I've actually downloaded a copy. I've got it right here. Let's take a look at it so you understand what's going to be on the exam. So here we are. This is the Core 1 220-1001. I just downloaded this from the CompTIA website, and they talk about the exam and da -da 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 -da, lots of stuff to scroll over. So you're going to have a maximum of 90 questions. You're going to have both multiple choice and performance-based questions. The length of test is 90 minutes. And here they say 12 months experience. They changed these. I'm not going to worry about that too much. And the passing score is 675 on a scale of 100 to 900. All right. All CompTIA exams are broken down into domains. The domains are the level one objectives that give you an idea of the big areas that they're going to be covering. They also give you percentages. So let's check all this out. So domain 1.0 is mobile devices, that's 14%. Domain 2.0 is networking at 20%. 3.0 is hardware at 27%. Virtualization and cloud computing, 12%. And hardware and network troubleshooting, 27%. So the big domains give us a rough idea, but if you continue to go through this document, it's gonna break these down into subdomains. And this is really the secret about not only what topics you need to know, but what aspect of them you need to know to be able to pass the A+. So let's continue to go through this document and let's break down one of the objectives. All right, well, here I am under 1.0 and you'll see it breaks it down into sub-objectives like 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. 1 you actually see these when you're taking the course as we go through the different episodes I'll be putting that on the screen so you know exactly what objectives we're going to be covering while you're studying. All right, let's take a look at one of these. So, for example, here on 1.2 it says, given a scenario, install components within the display of a laptop. And it says, types LCD, OLED, these are screen types, putting in a Wi-Fi antenna, installing a webcam, a microphone, an inverter, and a digitizer touchscreen. They're actually expecting you to take a look at a laptop display, open up the laptop display, and recognize the function of all these different devices and some of the issues that come into play. So yeah, when you watch my videos, we're definitely gonna be taking a laptop, yanking the monitor off, and talking about all the different wires. So it really tells us that we need to know how to install it. But there's more here, let me show you. Here at 1.4 it says, compare and contrast characteristics of various types of other mobile devices. So, smart watches and virtual reality headsets and e-readers. So a question like this isn't really expecting you to know how to configure or set up something. It's basically going to make sure that you understand what is a smart watch capable of doing? What do we expect an e-reader to do? So not only do we understand e-readers, we need to make sure we understand what does an e-reader actually do? So it's helpful. Now there's one more type of objective. I want to find one here for you. So we can actually see uh, two of these that are pretty similar. Summarize the properties and purposes of services provided by network hosts. So a web server, a file server, a DHCP server, a DNS server, and then explain common networking configuration concepts like DNS or DHCP. Notice that they are not telling you to configure these types of things. They're expecting you to understand what, for example, what is DHCP and why is it really important for your individual network devices. So if you want to understand how to configure DHCP, take my Network Plus courses. But within A Plus, we take advantage of these domain sub-objectives to give us a real feel on what we're supposed to know. So I don't want to just say DHCP. I need to understand how it's going to affect this individual system. Okay, so what I want to do now is let's go back through all of this and let's take a look at these major domains and take a moment so you understand what's really on the exam. 
The CompTIA 220-1001 exam is obsessed with mobile devices. So first of all, smartphones are gonna be a big part of this. So if you're using iOS, or if you're an Android user like me, you need to be comfortable with both of these mobile operating systems in terms of their functionality. I'll give you a clue. They pretty much do almost exactly the same thing, just different ways. But it doesn't stop with smartphones. Make sure you're comfortable with tablets, GPSs, e-readers. They've even got heart rate monitors in there. Make sure you're comfortable with all these different mobile devices. The 220-1001 loves to talk about networking, but when we talk about networking on the 1001, we're really talking more about the hardware. So for example, cabling. Do you know your RJ45s? Do you know your fiber cables? Do you know the different types of connectors? And can you tell one cat from another? Well, at the end of my video series, you will. We're gonna be talking about things like switches and routers and firewalls and all of these different boxes that are denizens of our networks. Now, and it doesn't stop with cabling. We also talk about the 802.11 wireless standard. So when you're configuring SSIDs and setting up your wireless networks, you're going to be talking about wireless access points and all that stuff as well. And it's not just setup. On top of that, you're going to be talking about some of the more basic networking configuration and troubleshooting tools out there. And you got to make sure you understand the difference between a fox and a hound and why these things are so important for any good network tech. When I think of the CompTIA A Plus 220-1001, I think about hardware, because I'm a hardware tech, and man, does it cover the hardware that you're gonna be seeing in systems. So for example, motherboards, do you know what these different slots are for? Do you know what this is for? Do you know how to connect this? Do you know how to install it into a system to make it run? We got CPUs in there, making sure you understand between the two big ones, Intel versus AMD, and what does Core i9 mean? Mass storage, we've got tons of stuff on the different types of hard drives that you're going to have in there and what's the difference between a hard disk drive and an SSD. We've got power supplies, connecting the right power supply for your system to make it go. RAM, what's the difference between DDR3 and DDR4 and all that type of stuff. There's even things like, for example, monitors. Do you know what a 1080 monitor is? Do you understand how to configure that, the right type of connections and the graphics cards that go with it? Make sure that you're comfortable with this because boy does the A Plus love their hardware. For the 220-1001, we're definitely gonna be hitting virtualization and cloud computing really hard. These types of technologies are critical for any a technician, and man, does CompTIA do a great job covering it. When it comes to virtualization, you'll be working with different types of hypervisors, understanding how we can use those to create virtual machines on our systems, and in the course, you'll actually be doing this yourself, and I'll give you the tools so you can do it all of the amazing virtualized systems that are out there with names like Amazon Web Services that we use on a daily basis to set up all of our different servers. If you go to a web page today, you're probably already on a cloud. Look, the whole reason we're technicians is because we are the troubleshooters for all kinds of hardware and network situations that might come up. On the 220-1001, we're going to be going over lots and lots of troubleshooting techniques so that you can keep your systems and your hardware working at peak condition. Let me just give this one more turn. Uh-oh. So that's a quick idea of what you're going to be seeing on the 220-1001 exam. Be sure to watch all of the Linda courses because we're covering every one of these domains in amazing detail.